So that explains your appointment with Valette. Yes, I see. I arrived at 9.30. I couldn't understand why the crowd had gathered. Then I saw Michael, and he told me Valette was dead. I couldn't believe it. I was free. The rest you know. Some of it, anyway. Inspector, may my wife leave now? Certainly. Father Logan has his alibi now, doesn't he, Willie? Of course. Thank you. Ruth, come. Good night. Thank Good you, night, madame, sir. for your help tonight. Yeah, Willie. Would you like to go now, Father? I said, would you like to go now? Hmm? Uh, go? It's been a terrible ordeal. We're, we're very grateful. Yes. Uh, Good night. Well, it's over, Inspector. Is it, sir? I'd like you to see this report. What report? Dr. Bonard, the autopsy surgeon. He claims that Valette could not have died before 11.30. Oh, wait Madame a moment. Madame Bramforce said that she left Father Logan at 11. You can do a lot of things in 30 minutes. I had never quite understood why Father Logan should have killed Valette. But now I think I can understand. And I thought it was over. I'm afraid not, Mr. Robertson. Only beginning. It's very early the following morning, but already the phone has rung in the ground for home. An urgent call from Mr. Robertson, the prosecutor. And now Ruth has rushed to the church of Sainte Marie. But I can't talk to you now, Ruth. There are people waiting at the confessional. Mr. Robertson, phone. They're going to arrest you. Oh, Michael, what can we do? I don't know. You're not going to let them bring you to trial. Don't you know what that would mean? I've done this to you. I've done it all. No, no, you mustn't say that. They're going to call me as a witness, and all because of what I told them last night. They claim I've given them the motive they've been waiting for. Ruth, please, I must go now. I should have lied, but I told the truth. And now they'll twist everything I've said. They'll turn it, they'll use it. I wanted to help you, to help you. Well, it doesn't matter. There's nothing either of us can do. Keller, what is it? I, I can talk to you now. You are through with confessions? Yes. You have been talking to the police. They asked about me. You told them about me? I'm going to be arrested, Keller. You? You are trying to frighten me. You think by telling me that I will give myself up. So what are you going to do when they arrest you? I don't know. Uh, you are frightened. Maybe they will hang you instead of me, and that frightens you. But you can't tell them, can you? You can't tell them as long as you are a priest. Come in. Father Logan. You've been looking for me, Inspector LaRue? Yes, Father. Yes, indeed we've been looking for you. For about three hours we've been looking for you, every policeman in Quebec. I've been walking. I've been trying to think. You can call it off, Murphy. He just walked in. You had lunch yet, Father? No. Well, let me order something for you. Oh, uh, you're under arrest. Yes, I know. Priest arrested for murder. Father Logan charged with bullet murder. Robertson plans speedy trial of accused priest. If you will tell the court once again, Sergeant Murphy, where did you find this priestly garment, this cassock? The rectory, sir. Father Logan's room. I found it hidden in his trunk. Hidden? Objection, my lord. On what grounds can the witness claim the article was hidden? Sustained. Sorry, my lord. The Crown is content to establish only the fact that the cassock was in the accused trunk. Now then, Sergeant, what did the police do with this cassock? We sent it to Dr. Bernard, pathologist at Laval University. I have his signed report here, sir. It's Dr. Bernard's opinion that the cassock was stained with human blood. Whose blood? The report says that the blood type is identical to that of the murdered man, Vallette. Thank you. Uh, if it please the court, 
The Crown would like to recall the witness whom we heard yesterday, but very briefly. Will Otto Keller take the stand? Now then, Mr. Keller, you told us yesterday that you spoke with Father Logan on the night of the murder at approximately 11.45 o'clock. Yes, sir. Under what circumstances? My wife was asleep, sir. I was just about to go to bed, so I opened the window. I saw someone entering the church. Who? I could not tell at that distance, sir, so I went downstairs and walked out of the rectory and across to the church. I saw someone kneeling against the altar rail. As he lifted his head, I saw it was Father Logan, sir. Was there anything about his manner that seemed out of the ordinary? He seemed so distressed, sir. I asked him if he were ill. He said no. He said I should go back and leave him alone. Did you go back? No, sir. Father Logan had always been so very kind to my wife and to me. I wanted to help him if I could. Well? He told me again to leave him alone, so I went back to our room. Your witness, Mr. Crawley. The defense waves examination at this time, my lord. Waves examination. Then the Crown calls Madame Granfor to the stand. Madame Ruth Granfor, please. I can't answer your questions in any other way. How can I when you repeatedly twist my words around and rephrase them? The witness will kindly confine herself to answer as to the facts. Madame Granfor, you just told us you were in love with the accused prior to the war. Yes. But what we are trying to find out is whether or not you were still in love with the accused on that night of Villette's murder. Yes, yes. Thank you. And how often had you met with him between the night at the summer house on the island and the night Villette was killed? Never, never. You want this court to believe that a woman in love doesn't make some attempt to I meet her lover? Lord, this line of questioning doesn't seem particularly relevant. But it is, my lord. I am trying to discover whether or not Villette's blackmail was based on his knowledge not merely of a single meeting between the accused and the witness, but of a continuous, uninterrupted no, series of... No, that's not of... true! It's not true! My lord, the witness appears to be on the verge of hysteria. May I excuse her for the moment and call the accused? Does the defense object? No objections, my lord. Call the accused. Father Michael Lowe. Suppose we begin with the cassock, Father Logan. This is your cassock. No, sir. It is not mine. Then perhaps you borrowed it from someone? No. Yet it was found in your trunk. Someone must have put it there? Yes. Or can you help us by suggesting who? I can't say. Father Logan, when did you decide to become a priest? After the war. And in becoming a priest, were you perhaps trying to hide from something? I've never thought of the priesthood as offering a hiding place. It involves certain responsibilities, certain morality. Yes. And yet you saw nothing wrong in having a clandestine meeting with a woman. Are you trying to imply that I was a priest at that time? I was not a priest. But did you consider that this woman was married? I, I wasn't aware that she was. And so you spent the whole day with her. Yes. Yes, we were good friends. I hadn't seen her in over three years. Such good friends that you made no effort to go home that night? We were caught in a storm. Oh, then the storm was the villain. I saw nothing wrong in being caught in a storm. Nothing wrong. Then why, on the following morning, did you hit Villette with your fist? Were you anxious to protect Madame's reputation? Yes. Oh, then her reputation was endangered. You suddenly realized there was something more than merely being caught in the storm. Villette... Villette made insinuations. My argument with Villette had nothing to do with any sudden realization. But you hit him in anger. Yes. You hit a man when he merely intruded upon a harmless situation. Then surely you are capable of far more violence when that same man blackmails your friend, Madame Granfort. I am not capable of murder. You would go to such a man, and unable to control your temper, unable to face a public scandal, you would turn again to physical force. No, I would not. No, you would not. You say that you and Madame separated at 11 o'clock on the night of the murder. That's right, yes. 
then it was possible for you to be at Villette's house by half past 11. Yes, it was possible, but I did not go there. I went back to the rectory. And what did you do, Father Logan? I, I went up to my room. Then I went downstairs and into the church. Did you see anyone there? Otto Keller. 